take 3,000. What's up, y'all? Listen, before I, it's your girl Erica here. If you know me, what's up? How you doing? Okay. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Erica. This is my show. This is my YouTube channel, Widow to the World. But before I even get started, I need to give a shout out to the content creators that make content either here on YouTube or Instagram, TikTok, wherever you make content at, I want to give you a shout out because listen, this is a lot. This is a lot. This is my third time starting. I've gotten about Five minutes in every time. This last time I just started, I had a great intro. I had everything working out. I, it was good to go. And my dog, first of all, I got lamps on boxes. Thank God that thank God that I just moved and I had all these boxes in my home. I got lamps on boxes all around me. I got glare. Glare. With whichever side it's on. I have glare. I got the sun about to go down. I have all of these things going on and I finally get into my groove. I finally get started with this video and guess who decides my, my computer. Wait a minute. My computer is on two shoe boxes, two mini tables. Okay. It's wobbly as I don't know what. And I'm finally in my, my let what I feel like is going to be a victory. And my dog decides to go right under the table. He knocked the, the whole thing, the whole shebang fell. So before I even get started, before I even say what I'm going to talk about, which is obvious, but before I even get started, I just want to give a shout out to all of the YouTubers out there that are doing stuff like this or Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is that you do, I want, and you do it to the public and you have to have a setup and you have to have lights and, and all this more power to you because this is a lot this is a lot but listen i'm excited to be here i'm excited to get started if you know me then you know it's been a long time coming for me with this and what better way to kick off my youtube channel than to discuss the reason why I, it took me so long to do it and that's the spirit of fear so if you don't know me again my name is erica and this is my youtube channel whittle to the world and i am going to be just teaching the good news of my savior and God, the most high, whatever you, whatever, whatever you call him, whatever name you use, I want to um, just spread his word because we know the Bible says that before um, Jesus comes back, the gospel has to be spread around the world. That means everyone will be able to know the good news before he comes back. So people like me have to take up the take the baton and we have to put it out there so people will know um, the good news. People will know about the Bible, that people will be able to be encouraged to do what I'm doing and do what others that I know are doing, which is spreading the word of God. So welcome to my channel. I'm super excited to have you. I'm super excited to start this journey. And if you're watching this video, you probably are one of the first people to get to see me up here doing this so i uh, thank you and i appreciate you make sure that you subscribe to the channel make sure you like the video because this is this has been a rough start but the plan is for it to get easier as i go along so welcome 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 again the topic today is going to be the spirit of fear overcoming the spirit of fear i'm going to be talking about the causes of fear the reason why we um, are so fearful to do things like this, the reason why or where that fear stems from, and the only way that we can overcome it, which is to trust and love God. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it <laughs> because I don't need anything else going wrong. And well, it's going to go right. Y'all pray for me. It's going to go right. It's going to go right. I'm not even, I'm not, do you see how the devil play? I'm not even going to play with him like that. Everything is fixing to go. Everything is about to go right and smoothly for this YouTube video. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. I don't know how long the video is gonna be. I am doing trial and error, tr uh, trying different things. Um, so with the board, let's talk about the board first. I'm gonna go ahead and break break this, start this off with a testimony, okay? Like I was saying um, at the beginning of the video, which it is the beginning, the beginning of the video, I was very, very afraid to do this. Even though I teach middle school and I have to get up in front of middle schoolers every single day and teach them English, this was terrifying for me. And a lot of people might look at it or look at me and say, why would you be afraid to do that? Why would you be afraid? You're good at it. Or, you know, 
I hear things all the time and I appreciate those things. However, the only person, not person, but the only entity that can help me overcome that fear is God. You know, it doesn't matter how I look. It doesn't matter how my voice sounds. It doesn't matter how funny I am. It doesn't matter. None of that matters if I let the devil get in my mind and give me anxiety and give me fear not to do it. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, the first this first episode is going to be about overcoming the spirit of fear. This board, now let's talk about this board, okay? So like I said, I was very, very nervous to do this. And, you know, even though different people were telling me, you know, Erica, do it, do it, do it. I still had the spirit of fear on me. And so, you know, sometimes we get confirmation from our friends and family. Sometimes we get uh, confirmation from strangers and things like that. Well, I had a huge, huge confirmation. I had already decided I was going to do it, but I was still, I still had a little 5% that was nervous to, to get out, to get up here and, and do all this. So I had watched some, some videos, shout out to Mark the messenger. Cause I love his videos. If you, uh, are not subscribed to his channel, I suggest that you go and subscribe to his channel because he definitely talks about fear and spiritual witchcraft and all of the spiritual warfare, I'm sorry, and all of these things that cause us to be afraid to live in our purpose. All right. The thing about it is I went to get this board and I got to the place. I, I didn't even look at board prices, to be honest. I was just like, whatever the board costs, I'm going to pay for it because that's going to solidify baby, if I spend my money, honey, we going. All right. So I went into the office depot and the lady, I went up to a, a, a nice lady. I was looking at some boards. They were very small. And as you can see, I write real big. So I needed me something a little bit bigger than what they had out. So I went and found me a nice lady. I went up to her. I talked to her and I was like, do you have anything bigger? Y'all excuse my TV behind them too, because we listen, I'll talk about that later. But anyway, I went up to this nice lady and I was like, do you have any boards that are bigger than the ones that you have out there? And she was like, yes, come with me to the back and let me show you the board. So I get back there. She has two boards. She has this one and then she has another one that's a little bit bigger. So I was like, I'm not going to take it too far. I'm not going to do too much. All right. So let me get the smaller version of the big boards. <laughs> so she put the SKU number into the machine and she was like, I don't know where this board came from. She was like, this board is probably supposed to be here. Somebody had wrote a SKU number on it. The SKU number was wrong. So she was like, listen, I'm just going to go up to the front. I'm going to look at the SKU numbers. And whatever board looks like the one you have, I am going to, that's what, that's what we're going to do. So I was like, okay. So we went up to the front. She typing the numbers in. And the, the way Office Depot is, the screen is in front of me, right? So I can see the screen that she is typing on so she types in the board she types in the type of board it is the size and all that stuff and then she is i see the boards pop up and i see 268 249 300 like all kinds of craziness and then there's one little board in the middle for 43 dollars so i'm just i mean most people of the world let's be let's 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 just be honest most people of the world would choose one of the higher boards. But something about my spirit, I guess, and something about the way I asked, this lady chose the board, the $43 board. Now, I know this board is not worth 40 This board is worth way more than $43, all right? If I'm seeing, I don't know what, I think, I think the $43 board was just a picture of one. Because there is no way that you have boards for same, this size, all in a row between 230 and two and 300 and and baby miss lady god bless you out there miss lady if you get to see this video god bless you because baby she gave me a little wink wink and she was like take the board so i went and i got me some expo markers and some and some erasers and all this kind of stuff and baby you should the way i grabbed that board so fast and kind of skirted out there you would have thought i was stealing I felt like I was stealing, but I wasn't. So I just want to give a shout out to her. I, and that was my confirmation. When I got outside to the car with my kids, my kids was in the car because I had my dogs with me and I just broke out crying. And my daughter was like, you going to cry every day? Or you going to cry every day? And I was like, these finally are tears, happy tears. 
So shout out to the lady. Shout out to the lady at the Office Depot in Virginia. I appreciate you. And I said, if this you went, I'm not going to even do that. When this YouTube blows, little Miss Mama getting a check for me. Okay? Because when people do stuff like that, you have to pay it forward. But I said all that to say, this is, that was confirmation for me. I was like, look, I can't let this lady down. I got to take this board. I got to put this board up. I'm not putting no holes in these people's walls. So for right now, I just got it. <laughs> Lean it on my TV. And we're going to leave it like that for now. All right? We're going to leave it like that for now until I can mount it and get my place settled. Because if you don't know, I just moved into a new place. I'm telling everybody because I'm so excited about it. But um, we're going to leave it right here for now. So we are going to talk about overcoming the spirit of fear today. And if you just... If you can, kindly give me some suggestions on just things I can do to, I looked at some YouTube videos, but nothing I did worked. I just want to be able to get this glare and stuff off of this board. I might need to mount it. I'll figure it out. But we are going to jump right into it. So we're going to talk about overcoming the spirit of fear, baby. Because fear is what kept me just in my head. It kept me wondering and thinking about all the things that could go wrong. And to be completely honest, none of the things that actually went wrong did I think about. Think about that. My dog knocking this stuff over, the lighting, the none of that, the tables and by all this setup that I had to do, none of that crossed my mind. None of that crossed my mind. So that just lets you show, that goes to show that the spirit of fear is not real. It is imagined. It's not real. It's in your head. And, and Satan does that to stop people from like me, people, stop people like me from going out there and, and, and walking in purpose and fulfilling God's purpose and spreading the good news around the world. Let's just, let's just be, keep it honest. So we're going to start. I have my Bible here. Um, if you don't have your Bible, I am going to probably make a separate YouTube channel so I can post the pictures of the board on there, uh, not YouTube, a separate Instagram channel so I can post the video or pictures of the board so you guys can see it clearly. I think y'all can see it. Um, however, I write really big and it's a lot of stuff on there. I just like to be fully prepared. As we go through the channel, I guess we will see if this stays like this or if it changes. But for now, it's working, obviously. It's here. And we're going to just keep it moving. So the first thing just straight out the gate, we already know that God does not give us the spirit of fear, all right? The spirit of fear does not come from God. The spirit of fear, the spirit of confusion, anxiety, none of those things come from the Most High. All of those things are put into our brains by the devil. All of those things are put into our brains to stop us from fulfilling purpose. So it's very important that we understand that if we're feeling anxious about something, if we're feeling nervous about something, if we're feeling scared about something, we need to know that those feelings do not come from the most high. So if they don't come from the most high, because there's only two sources for everything. There's only two sources in this world for everything. And that's what people need to realize. Either you on one side or the other. There is no gray area when it comes to following the word of God. There is no great. What's in this book is it. Anything outside of this book, anything that anything that tells you anything other than what is in this book or or expresses anything opposite of what's in this book, the same thing, huh? All right. Then we know it's a lie. We know it's from the pits of hell. So first of all, this book tells us that God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, confusion, none of that. So we already know if it's not if it's not a if the source of of our fear confusion, anxiety is not from God, then we already know who it's from. Satan, right? So real quick, it comes from the devil. So we're gonna, I'm going to look at uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 to 14. Now I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. This is my seventh month following the word of God. Well, let me just, can I erase it? I'm going to pretend I'm rewinding. All right. Earlier in my life, I used to go to church. I'm 39 years old. Earlier in my life, um, I used to go to church. Probably when I got pregnant with my first daughter, I have a daughter that's 18. When I first got pregnant with her, I was in church very heavy. I was going to revivals. It was actually my best friend's church. 
her family church. I was going, I was dedicated. I was, I had my walk with God and I was walking it. Do you understand? You couldn't tell me nothing about it. God was the one for me as I, and now he is again, but as I was going through that journey, after I had my daughter, I just, I was very young. I was like 21 years old. So after I, before I had her, let's rewind a little bit more. Before I had her, I've always been, I've never been just a big partier. I've never, you know, went out a lot. I've never just been just, I was in the streets in a certain kind of way, but I wasn't in the streets like that. And as you get to watch my channel, I'm pretty sure I'll share more of my story, but just to keep it short and sweet, I was never really a, part, a party person or any drug person or anything like that. After I had my daughter is when, and I was going through my walk, which is now that I'm thinking about it, of course, the devil is good. That's when he's going to come get me, right? As I was, after I had my daughter, that's when I started getting into a lot of drugs, you know, partying. I was even in the gay lifestyle for a minute. I'm just going to keep it honest with y'all because God not going to let me get up here and lie to y'all or leave things out because leaving things out is lying by omission. My girl needs to tip it in. So basically, after I had my daughter, I started getting wrapped up in all of these things, all right? So with that being said, I ended up being separated from God. You know, I ended up living a lifestyle because like I said, you can't be is either one or the other. So I was saying that to say I've just recently been re-entered into my walk with God after years and years of being separated. And I let I'm not blaming it on anybody, but I let the people that were around me influence me just to keep it honest. And that's what that's why energy is so important. And that's why it's so important to make sure that we are around people that are walking the walk better than us. Because you want those people's you want those people's I don't want I want to say rituals. The things that they do on a daily basis, you want them to start affecting your life, too. You want to start following the things that they're doing. There's people that I follow that taught me about fasting. Somebody told me to get this bot, this particular Bible. All of these things are residuals of the people that I started to surround myself with when I came back to God. So I'm saying that to say this. This is new for me as far as re-entering, rededicating my life to Christ. That's what we call it. Rededicating my life to Christ is very new to me. So there are some things that I may get wrong. Kindly correct me. I have no problem with being corrected. I have no problem with people telling me, hey, you know, this is not right. As long as this Bible back it up, then I'm good with that. So I just ask that you guys be respectful. You know what I'm saying? And be kind and give me whatever feedback you would like to give me. But we are going to start with two. Sorry, yes, two Timothy. Chapter 1, verses 7 to 14, and I'm going to read those to you real quick. We're going to talk about where the spirit of fear comes from. And I got my little sticky notes in here, baby. I think I'm real organized. And I'm going to slow down. I know I, I talk fast normally, so I feel like I just need to slow down a little bit. So I'm going to slow down a little bit and get into it. Yeah, I am nervous. I'm not fearful. Not scared because I'm doing it, but I am nervous. And we're also going to talk about the two types of fear and how some how people sometimes get those mixed up because people think that followers of Christ are not supposed to get nervous or anxious. We're just supposed to be jumping off bridges. And, and that's not what God means when he tells us we're not supposed to have a spirit of fear. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's read chapter 1, 7 to... I'm going to go 7 to 14. I'm using the Hallelujah Scriptures. The people in my Bible study use the Sefer. They use the Amplified. Whatever it is that you use is some that I suggest that you stay away from, but ain't no judgment here. All right? So I'm going to be reading from the Amplified, Amplified Version. And I'm going to go with 2 Timothy, verses 1, 7 to 14. So it says, think over what I say for the Lord shall give you understanding into all this. Remember that Yeshua HaMashiach of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my good news, for which I suffer hardship as a criminal unto chains. But the word of God is not chained. So I endured through it all for the sake of the chosen, so that they too obtain deliverance, which is in Mashiach with everlasting esteem. 
Trustworthy is the word. For if we died, I think I wrote down the wrong one, y'all. Hold on. I think I wrote down the wrong one. But baby, I'm gonna keep going. Let me look at my notes. Hold on. No, that's what it says. 2 Timothy 1 7. And I'm not gonna stop. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> We're not gonna stop though. We're gonna keep going. So I don't know if I can pause this. Probably not, but don't worry about it. Hold on, because I'm gonna find the verse that I wanted. I think 2 Timothy 1 7, right? Oh, child. That's right. Let me read this. I got, and I got, it's crazy. Ain't that crazy how my brain just didn't even read? We're going to start over. All right. Verse. Yes. So this is going to be 2 Timothy. I was looking at, I didn't realize it was. I should have known if it's a 2 Timothy, it's a 1 Timothy, or whatever. So I'm going to look at 2 Timothy, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For Elohim has not given us a spirit of cowardice, but of power and of love and of self-control. So do not be ashamed of the witness of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but suffer hardship with me for the good news according to the power of Elohim who has saved us and called us with a Kodesh calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and favor, which was given to us in Mashiach. So let's talk about that real quick. So basically we know whatever the Bible says is true. Whatever the Bible says is the word of God. So it is what it is. And it tells us that God does not give us the spirit of fear. God gives us the spirit of power, to push through our nervousness and anxiety. And God gives us the spirit of self-control and of love. That's it right there. So when you think about self-control in itself, a lot of times we let the devil get into our minds and we're anxious. And we, so we are acting out of those behaviors. For example, me being nervous about speaking the word of God caused me fear and it caused me anxiety. However, the Bible says... That that didn't come from God, so I should already dismiss it. But not only that, that means that I need to learn how to control myself. I shouldn't be acting irrationally, acting crazy. You know, um, I need to have control of myself and know that I have the power and, the, and God loves me enough for me to get up here in front of people and speak about him. It also says, Elohim, who has saved us and called us with the, oh, I read this one already. Um, it says, but now revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, who indeed abolished death and brought life and incorruptibility to life through the good news, for which I was appointed a proclaimer and an emissary and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to watch over that which I have entrusted to him until that day. Hold the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in belief and love which are in Mashiach. Watch over the good deposit that was entrusted to you by the Ruach HaKodesh dwelling in us. So basically that's saying you got the Holy Spirit in you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, there is nothing to fear. Usually people get afraid to speak to people, or not just speak, but people get afraid just to share the word of God because they're not doing it for the right reasons. We have to make sure that we are doing it for ourselves. I mean, ourselves too. Because once you walk, I can say that. I can say that. We're doing it for ourselves, but first we are doing it for God. First we are out. We're not out here trying to please men. We're not out here trying to get likes, clicks, and clout. We are out here to do it for God and to do it for ourselves. And the reason why I said that's okay for us to do it for ourselves is because when you're walking in purpose, you find peace. And who doesn't want to live a peaceful life? So not only are we doing it for God, but we're doing it for ourselves. And we do, I'm doing it for y'all too. I'm doing it for y'all to be able to see that it is possible. You have to push through and you have to overcome the spirit of fear that is in you. And the only way that you can overcome it is to 
Trust in God. Trust that he loves you. Love yourself and love other people. Because if I love myself, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to want a peaceful life. If I love myself, I'm going to want to walk in purpose. If I love my brothers and sisters, which are you guys, then I want y'all to know the word of God, right? So how would I, how would that be possible for me not to, how would, why would I want to stop myself or scare myself into not having a peaceful life, into not sharing the word of God with my brothers and sisters, into not sharing the good news with, with the world, even people that I don't know right now, why would I not want to do that? So that's what 2 Timothy 1, 7, 4, you know what I'm saying? One, chapter 1, and I'm not going to lie, y'all, this is a struggle for me. This is one of my struggles as a new, with my new walk in Christ is saying this chapter. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 to 14. So that covers basically who gives us the spirit of power, who gives us the spirit of love, and who gives us the spirit of self-control. All right? And that is the most high. Now, listen, if you have never seen the Hallelujah scriptures, it uses a lot of, it uses the symbols for God. It uses the, it uses a lot of different titles for God because he has many, many titles, Adon, Elohim. So I might get confused and mixed up for now in the symbols, really. The Hebrew symbols that they use for, that, you know, that are used for his name can be very confusing. So just bear with me. Don't jump down my throat. I'm trying, all right? So, and, and that's what they say, ain't nothing, ain't nothing to a try but a fail. Meaning, if you don't try, you can't fail or win. So you have to make sure that you're pushing through. Now, real quick, we're going to talk about the two types of fear. I was watching a video, and I think, to be honest, me being afraid to be me, I was afraid of fear. Yes, that's what I mean. I was afraid of fear, meaning that I was afraid to be fearful. I was afraid to have anxiety. I was afraid, like, so that, so now I, I had two things to jump over. And one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I was afraid to to a fear is because I was feeling like I was letting God down by being scared or being anxious or being stressed. And what I realized is there are different types of fear. There's a type there's a type of fear that God hates. And then there's a type of fear that is just a natural occurrence because we are in this human body, right? If somebody came up to you with a gun pointed in your face, you might get scared. If someone who you didn't know jumped over your balcony and started beating on your door, you might get anxious or you might get stressed. Now, there are some people out there that's, you know, that's really bad and they and that may not scare them but when you are in this human body you have a fight flight or freeze response and if you don't know what that is that means that when there is when those hormones are pumping and things happen the normal reflexes of being in our body they may cause a little fear they may cause a little anxiety and that is okay all right it is what you do with it that got that matters to god so there's two types we got the normal reflexes of being in this body fight flight or freeze and that's when you Throw the bees on them, run away, or freeze and just get stuck. Get stuck. All right? I went out the camera. But that is your normal reflexes in your body. You have all these hormones. You got adrenaline. You got all these things pumping through you. So when, when things are happening, that is one thing. This is the one that God despises, and that's the fear of an event. That's a different type of fear. That is when you are afraid of your past, you are afraid of your future, or maybe... You're afraid of the present. And a lot of times, like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of times, not a lot of times, but this particular time with this particular event, I was afraid of all the things that would go wrong. And like I told you, none of those things went wrong. So it was other things that went wrong, but but I was already in it. So I pushed myself through. I got anxious. I yelled at my dog. But then I, I apologized. And then I moved on and I continued recording my video. So that is what we mean by fear of events there is there's a reason why we have a saying called fear of failure right we're scared that people gonna laugh at us we're scared that people are gonna mock us we're scared that people are going to point fingers at us and what we need to understand y'all is they gonna do it anyway they're going to do it anyway so why would we stop our blessings why would we stop 
working for the most high and fulfilling purpose because we think man is going to judge us. They're going to do it anyway, baby. I don't know if anybody told y'all, but they do that anyway. They're going to hate on you anyway. They're going to judge you anyway. They're going to point their fingers anyway. And it is your job to look at them and keep moving because we already know that is not of God. We have to stop letting the things that men do. And, and when I say men, I mean men and women. We have to stop letting the things that men do stop us from fulfilling purpose. Baby, I'm not doing it no more. I'm sorry. I can't. Hold on. I just came here to say. I'm not letting y'all do it no more. So all of the people that want to point fingers, all of the people that want to say, oh, she thinks she did, so she thinks she did, or baby, it's not going to work because I done made this video now. This first video, this is it. It might not be the best video. It might not be my best lesson. It might not. It might be my best lesson. Who knows? But what, I, what I'm about to say is y'all should have never let me make this one. Y'all should have went so hard that I ain't make this one. I'm just going to be honest because baby, it's up from here. All right. <laughs> so anyway, the reason why the, that you might ask yourself, there's a there's there's a war on us, all right? Especially people who are really truly working for God, there's a war on us. People are brought into our lives all the time to try to stop us from feeling purpose. People use us, people abuse us, people misuse us, they do it all, right? And that is why it's important that we have discernment too so we are making sure the people that we are following have the fruits of the spirit. And if you if you don't know what the fruits of the spirit are, I'm already 31 minutes in. I don't know how long these videos are going to be. Maybe an hour to 45 minutes. I don't know. But we're going to see. Anyway, if you don't know the fruits of the spirit, you can go to my Instagram. On my Instagram, I have a list of the fruits of the spirit. You need to be looking at those and making sure the people that you are around are demonstrating those. I say all of them. I know sometimes, you know, we're human beings. We slip and fall. I just, when my dog came up under this table, baby, I, I said about two, three curse words and I had to repent. So people make mistakes. You know, people do things that are not godly. We're not human. You know what I'm saying? We all fall short of the glory. However, if you're seeing a repeating pattern of these things with these people, baby, that means that, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, it is too sources you either have a source of light or you have a source of dark so with that i thought my mic was muted i was gonna cry i was gonna break down and cry but guess what i was just gonna have to do it in the dark because the, the light's about to go out on this patio right here and i was just gonna do it again oh well we're not doing that devil we're not doing that all right so anyway the devil wants us to shut up there's a war against us, okay? People like me, the devil wants us to shut up. He does not want me to have my big mouth butt up here talking about God and spreading the word of God, especially not in a way that people can relate to, that people are going to listen to, that people might find entertaining, because I know I'm pretty entertaining. He don't want that, all right? The last thing the devil wants is me saving souls out here. So he gives us the spirit of fear. He gives us the spirit of anxiety so we can shut our mouths. All right, but you're not gonna be able to do that. They've already told you, and none of your minions gonna be able to do it either. So this war on us is in all aspects, and I'm gonna eventually, probably my next live or my next video, I'm gonna talk about emotions because um, I think that's important. I also want to talk about um, I want to talk about emotions. I want to talk about discernment in the mind because that is the devil's playground the devil gets in your mind from an early age he lets trauma and things like that happen to you so you are caught up in a cycle of just mental stress i know someone personally who they they're finally being delivered from that and i'm happy about that it took a lot of talking and a lot of lecturing from me to get them to the point that they are but they would just be so consumed with negativity like i was exhausted i was like i am so tired of hearing all of the things that went wrong all the time and i had to apologize to that person because i realized that is the devil that has that person's mind trapped like that the devil wants you caught up thinking about all of these things so you never fulfill purpose so i'm going to talk about um, I'm in, in a couple up and coming videos. I'm going to talk about how the devil attacks our mind, how the devil attacks our relationships. I'm going to talk about emotions and I'm going to talk about discernment. All right. But for right now, this is just a list of the things. 
I know it's all squished together. But this is a list of the things that the devil attacks. Relationships. They attack our health. He, I said they because it is they and him because he have people working for him. Because if he could be everywhere, I'm pretty sure he would be. He can't be. So and he probably lazy. Think about all of the think about all of the uh, attributes of a person that's just mm, they laziness is one of them. So he, he used his minions to get you all riled up. So he attacks our relationships. He attacks our health, our finances and our mind. The anxiety and mental stress and all of those things, especially if they're coming in this one, especially if it's fear of an event, he gets in our mind and gets us going. So we can't, we can't, you know what I'm saying, operate like that. So we have to be very mindful that that is what the devil does. But we also have to be mindful of the fact that we already have the victory. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that y'all already have the victory? All of this, besides the, the scriptures about God, all of the things that the devil does don't matter because you already have the victory. And the Bible tell you, I'm going to show you. If you go to, um, I had, wait, where is my, oh, let me see. Hold on, because I'm not going to let that deter me. Let's see. I'm about to show y'all. Well, even if I, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look up the scripture because we are gonna go over Ephesians six, Ephesians chapter six, verses six through nineteen. I'm gonna read all. Oh, y'all can see me. <laughs> I'm gonna read all that. I ain't moving it because this whole thing might fall. So if I get out of there, I'm sorry. I bet. Listen, I'm gonna go over Ephesians. Uh, chapter 6 through 19 it might cover it there but basically you know that anyway we already had a victory it's already ours he's already given us the you know, we already said it in that uh, in, in to, to timothy right he gives us love he gives us power self-control so that means you're victorious if you got the word of god baby you're already victorious this is yours this is your key because it, even just me being anxious nervous stressed out if i read my bible then I get calm. There were some things that happened today. I have a Bible study and there, you know, there are some people that left the group and I can't worry about that. I can't like Erica three months ago, I would have put it all on myself. Like, oh my God, Erica, it was your group and you failed all those people, baby. I can't carry y'all. If y'all, if, if we are supposed to be a family, we're supposed to be a group. We're supposed to be a team. Then we need to be working together. People be all, look, again, I said, I'm going to do a, a live on emotions or a video on emotions, emotions, you have to process your emotions, but at the same time, we can't be so emotional that we're impulsive and we're doing stuff like, because you don't like the way somebody says something, just reacting on that. We have to learn how to chill, self-control, let your emo process your emotions and then make a decision about what you wanna do, but I'm leaving that alone. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Ephesians. I said, if you're doing it for God, then there's no fear. That is a, that I'm about to read that one, Ephesians, uh, Chapter six, verse six. So what I mean by that is, why should, again, I said that earlier, if I am, if what I'm doing is truly for God, what do I have to fear? Who cares what I look like? Who cares what people got to say about me if I'm doing it for God? Because God don't care, right? So we have to be mindful when we care so much about people, how people, what people are going to say or the way that we look and things like that, then that is where you start opening up the, that's, that means that you're not doing it for the right reasons. So you need to make sure that you are doing it for God, because if you're doing it for God, then what everybody else say don't matter. I don't care if nobody watched this video. I mean, I kill, but I don't, I want, I want people to watch it because I, otherwise, how am I going to get the word of God out there? However, I don't care about people judging it. Let me say that. Don't you, I don't care. So if you do have something, you know, to say, keep it to yourself because I don't care, baby. So let's look at chapter six, Ephesians. I don't know if y'all can see that. And again, I will type, I'll do that for y'all. I'll type all the scriptures that I cover in the bottom, in the, I don't know what it's called, in the description box for you guys to be able to go and read them yourselves. But this one is Ephesians six and six. And I wrote next to it, who are you doing it for? So let's look at verse six. I'm going to read it. I'm going to actually start with verse five. It says, servants, obey your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart 
as to Mashiach, not with eye service as man, men pleasers, but as servants of Mashiach doing the desire of Elohim from the inner self, with rendering service with pleasure as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he shall receive the same from the Lord, whether he is slave or free. Let's talk about it. I know you heard it. Basically, that verse is saying, if you're do, if you if you on this walk and you're and you're spreading the good news, you need to be doing it for God, not for attention, not for likes, not for clicks, not for views. Because what you're going to find is the devil gonna give you those. If you're if you're not doing if you're doing it for ego or you're doing it for you know any of those things, the devil gonna let you feel the blessings for a little while because that's how he do. We already know how the devil do. He gonna give you a little taste, make it feel good, and he gonna snatch it back. So you're in despair, and and again, your mind will be in this cycle where you can't fulfill purpose. It's all a little setup if you really look at it. But the Bible tells us, the Bible says that we are if we're doing it for God, then He gonna provide for us. So what is the worry? What is the fear for? So make sure that we are doing what we're doing for him and not for anything else we're not doing it for accolades we're not doing it to be on tv we're not doing it so we can reach uh any celebrities that we like we're not doing it for that because the biggest celeb the big the biggest celebrity influence i hit is god you know what i'm saying so if you're not doing it for him then you're doing it for the world again we get we reap benefits because the Bible tells us that when we serve God, then we he's going to provide for us. Right. So there's going to be benefits and blessings to serve God. But we shouldn't be doing it for that. We should be doing it to spread the good news, to spread the word of God, to help others. You know what I'm saying? Get their salvation. That is our goal. That is our that should be our goal. So Ephesians 6, 6 covers that. Hold on, my child. She's so sweet. She asked me if I want some for Wendy's, but I can't eat. She know that. All right. So Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 6, who you doing it for? Ask yourself. So, so if anybody, if you see people out there that are that you feel like are doing it for the wrong reasons, baby, hit them with that. Hit them with that Ephesians 6, 6, baby. Who is you doing it for? All right. The next one is Ephesians 6. And this, oh, when I read this, y'all, listen, I ain't going to lie to you. I was nervous. I was nervous about doing this because I was like, Lord. But then I knew I knew I was going to do it, but it, I was just so anxious. You know what I'm saying? My little fingers was just twitching. It was too much. So when I read this, I was like, baby, they got me messed up. They got, I'm, I'm doing it, baby. I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for the most high. Did I drink my water? Let me have some. <laughs> if y'all know me, y'all know I'm goofy. So you just going to get what you get. Don't throw a fit. All right, so I'm going to move this so y'all can see. Let's read Ephesians 6, 11 to 19. So it says, oh, this time with the armor of God. I need to armor up. So I'm going to go over the armor of God real quick. And we're going to talk. I might not talk that much about this. Let's see what I'm going to say about it. But this is a very, very powerful scripture. Because listen, the means is out, y'all. The means is out. And I'm realizing that it's getting... I'm not going to lie to you. I've been completely shocked in the past two months. I have been completely shocked by people who say they follow God or f read the, maybe they're definitely hearers of the word and not doers. Let's be completely honest. I have been, I ha I've had to take a step back. Like, oh, this is real deal. Holy feel. Like the, the road is narrow. This is serious. When the Bible says the road is narrow last night, I even was talking to myself. I was like, baby, they wasn't playing. That verse is dead on. Like the road is narrow. That's why you have to make sure that you are these people that you following and listening to. The fruits gotta, and it, and then if if the fruits not matching up and you continue to follow those people, baby, that's on you. You need you now need to repent for that because you know what godly people are like. And if people are out here not acting godly. Then and you want to continue following them because they got followers, or you want to continue following them because you love them. We supposed to love everybody, but it don't say love them and follow them. It say just love them. Okay, we need to learn the difference between uh, when we. I had put a tweet out last night that basically said we need to know when to intercede and not intervene. You need to learn how to. We need to learn how to pray for these people, not combat them. I was serious. 
All right. So let me read Ephesians 6, 11 to 19. So it says, what I said, I told you it's not easy for me. Oh, 11 to 19. All right. So this is talking about the armor of God. So this is, so listen, the only way that you can overcome fear is to armor up. The only way, the only way that you can uh, combat spiritual warfare is to armor up. The only way that you can combat if demonic forces, all this stuff, remember we battled against principalities, which this verse covers, right? We need to know those people that are mocking us, those people that are calling us liars and calling us all of these things. They are work. It's not them. It is. They are. Work, they don't. They don't even realize what they're doing. They don't even. They realize what they're doing, but they don't realize who making them do it. Again, we have two sources. If you are doing things out of a, if you're doing things. And they could probably gonna come under this video on the fake pages and all that, baby. Bring it on. I'm going to leave it up. Because, baby, you need to be convicted by that. God going to convict you about, about that. And if God don't convict you about it, guess what? Then you're not a real follower of God. If you can do things, if you can make up things and, and be mean to people and be nasty to people and still go to sleep at night, baby, I'm scared of you. I ain't, but I am. Because you ain't scared of God. Anyway, I'm going to read the scripture. Verse 11 says, Put on the complete armor of Elohim, for you have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in the heavens. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so that you have the power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all to stand. Stand then, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. Above all, having taken up the shield of belief with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Wait a minute. Let's talk about the burn. Why is the arrows burning? When people come at you. When people come at you, especially when you're trying to do something for God, when you're trying to do something good and people come at you, you need to, re the reason why they they full of fire is because they're coming from the pits of hell. That is why those arrows are full of fire because where the fire at? in hell. So you need to realize that you have to have on, you got to have your word in your heart. You got to have the truth on your mind. You got to have whatever they said on your feet and you got to be ready to, step over them with it baby because they're not gonna stop listening like i said i was i was i don't know if i said it in this video or one of my bloopers but mark the messenger is an amazing amazing man, man of god the fruits of the spirit show on his platform now do people have things to say i'm sure i saw i when i typed his name into youtube there were all these videos just bashing him and i'm like what is this man doing that y'all mad about so i because he's not even one of those He's not even one of those um, preachers or pastors or whatever you want to YouTube content creators that interacts with his followers. He doesn't talk to, to people in the DM. He doesn't, you know, he says he reads all of the comments. So if people, you know, ask him to pray and stuff like that, he does it. But he's not interacting with these people. So so if he's just reading the word of God and saying what the book, what the Bible says, then what's the problem? So that's how they hung Jesus. Forget, not forget Mark the messenger, but on a bigger scale look at what they did to jesus like these people are going to be coming at you so you have to be armored up you gotta have them you gotta have everything covered making sure you're in truth that's why it's important to kill people with kindness because if you give them an itch baby they're gonna they are waiting for you to step out of character i know people just want and i I'm, I'm, i did it recently <laughs> a lot of y'all like that but I had to erase them tweets because I know that that's not of God. And I know those people want me to be acting like them, but I'm not like y'all. If you are going around being mean to people, if you're going around being sneaky, malicious, manipulative, those are fruits of the devil. I don't care what nobody got to say. So even if you're doing those things to me, lying on me, even if you're doing those things to me, I got to kill y'all with kindness because the thing about it is y'all waiting for me to slip up, baby. Like I said, I'm not going to let y'all do that. And I know y'all watching this video, so now I'm just saying, but for real, people who do things like that are not of God. So you have to be armored up so you can, so you can have the, you know, whatever you call it, 
this to let your emotions go, to move on, and to make sure that you are approaching them with kindness and godly, you acting godly. Because they're going to use it. They can't wait to screenshot and do all kinds of stuff that you that you done said and did. And the thing about it, I've said it and I've d- done it, but I'm not that same person today. If you're still, even five seconds ago, even if, which I had didn't do anything five seconds ago, but even if you had done something five seconds ago, you repented for that, that's it. If they bring those things up, oh, well, baby, because I'm not the girl anymore. I'm not the same girl I was yesterday because every day as I read the word of God, I get stronger and stronger in my faith and I get stronger and stronger in my walk. Baby, I'm going to be sick with it. I'm like on fire for God. Y'all, I don't even think people realize how on fire for God I am. I will, I will literally will, and I said this too, on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, the perfect drug, A-D-A-P-E-R-F-E-C-T-D-R-U-G. Follow your girl because I'll be putting them tweets out, all right? But basically, I said on Twitter today, I will turn my back on anybody in this world for God. And I meant it. And people might look at that and might say, oh, you know, what about her mama? What about her kids? What Anybody. Because the Bible also says that anybody you put, if you put anybody before me, you're not worthy of me, baby. I want to get my salvation. So what I look like getting drug around when I could just go to God? Absolutely not. Anyway. So let me finish reading this. I'll be, I'll be taking off. You know what I'm saying? I'll just be losing track of thoughts. If that bothers y'all, it's just going to have to be, this ain't the channel for you. Because I'm going to read a little bit and, and, and I'm going to say whatever God put on my heart to say. All right? So, it, but I want this to be the channel for you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'll be serious. Let me see. Oh, this is talking about how God gives us the spirit to fight. So, it says, I'm going to go back to 14. It says, stand then having girded your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. So basically it's telling us, you know, we don't fight against flesh and blood. It's about principalities. These people that are running around spreading rumors, telling lies, having sex, doing all that, drinking, drugging, partying. These people, these are not, we're not battling them. We're battling the spirits within them. This is spiritual warfare. And that's why you need to be armored up because these people are being used by Satan. Let's just keep it above. These people are being used by Satan. Pe- very People who are very, you know, sick, Jezebel, sucky, all this stuff out here. And you just ducking it. But if you armor, armor up with the word of God, baby, it's going to slide right off your back. They're, because you already know it's not them. These people, it's not them. They are being used and you have to make sure you don't give them ammunition against you. Basically, it says, above all, having taken up the shield of belief with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. I read that. It says, take also the helmet of deliverance and the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of God. Praying at all times with all prayer and supplication in the Ruach. Watching in all perseverance and supplication for all the Kodashim, the chosen ones. Also for me, that a word might be given to me in the opening of my mouth to be bold in making known the secret of the good news. What? You better be bold when you come out here giving the word of God. You And that's why we cannot be timid. We can't be scary. And, and when you think about it, it's already a cycle. If people do harmful things, it's very... Let me start over. Because some people just not scared of God. So, so I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking about people who actually have a, a decent fear of God and, and want to follow God, but they still stuck in worldly ways. Those people, it's hard to get out here and be bold for the word. And he want us bold. He want us screaming from the mountaintops, the, 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 the rooftops about him. So how can you do that if you have if you are still acting worldly? So that's why it's important that once you are really walking in your purpose and you really and you are really pushing for God, you have to make sure that you are kind, that you, I done got on kindness. Y'all, we still be talking about fear, but I guess it all go together. But basically, you know, you have to, you have to be armored up though so you're not afraid, all right? Because if you out here being shady, if you out here doing sneaky deals, if you out here fornicating, you out here drinking and partying and somebody can expose you, then you, sh- if you are, something not wrong with you, then you should be afraid to speak of the word of God. You should be afraid somebody going to get you. So that's why, or or call you out or expose you. But it just depends, all right? Because I know some people do it. 
and they have and I, and they they just don't have a conscience they have no fear of god and that's on them i'm not talking to them people because baby them people I, only god can deal with those people you pray for those people i'm talking about the people that actually have a healthy fear of god they just you know we all struggle you know what i'm saying we all fall short some people more than others so we need to make sure that we are being armored up and that we are covered in the blood of jesus when we come out here and the only way we can really do that is make sure that we're repenting for our sins and we are trusting god in all that we do so i don't know if you can see but basically god gives you the spirit to fight he gives you the armor to fight he gives you what you need to be out here doing this work because somebody got to do it somebody got to put this work out all right um there's some additional uh chapters down here i got matthew it's already i'm i probably want to keep these to an hour so it's not too long but um some additional scriptures is matthew 10 7 joshua 23 10 1 John 4, 18 and Matthew 14, 30. It's one more. I believe the, the one that I really want to cover is Matthew 14, 30. Y'all, if this camera fall, if this little wobbly table fall, I'm just going to end the video. I'm not going to even lie. Let me see real quick, but because I got enough today. Let me see. Matthew 10, 7. Matthew 10, 7 might be the one that I want to read. So let me see real quick. I'm going to close it out with this. All right. Somebody. Let's see. I got Matthew 10, 7. Yes, let's close it out with this one. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little bit further back than ten seven. I mean, I'm gonna go a little bit further back than seven, but I am on chapter ten. I'm gonna start. So in this one, this then my guy. This is Jesus talking. All right, and he was talking to the disciples. He was telling the disciples what, and this kind of goes into the spirit of fear because you can't be you can't be afraid to go out there. You cannot be afraid to go out there. And he gives us instructions on how we're supposed to be. He gives instructions for everything. But we, we he gives us instructions on how we are supposed to behave and how we are supposed to respond to, you know, people on this walk. So I'm going to get some water and then I'm going to read this. And while I'm out the way, y'all can get y'all uh, get y'all a thing, get y'all a picture. All right. So. Matthew 10, 7. I'm going to go a little further back. It says, actually, I'll start there. It says, and as you go, proclaim, saying, the reign of the heavens has drawn near. That's what he's telling them to do. Heal the sick, cleanse the leapers, or the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. You have received without paying, give without being paid. You hear me? So if you're doing it for money, you should be scared. It says, do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts or a bag for the journey or two undergarments or sandals or staffs for the worker is worthy of his food. And into whatever city or village or village you enter, ask who is worthy in it and stay there until you leave. So basically he's telling them, um, you know, ask who is honorable, be around honorable people so then you don't have to worry about nothing. You should be out here begging and asking for money and coins and sandals and stuff, none of that. You should be just doing the word of God because it is an honor to God. It is an honor to yourself to, to, to follow the word of God. This is my part. And if the house is worth, and as you enter into a house, greet it. And if the house, that means speak. I can't stand somebody coming to the house and don't speak, but moving on. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever does not receive you, nor hear your words, when you leave that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Truly, I say to you, it shall be more bearable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So what he's saying is, when he sent his people out into the world, when he sent us out amongst these people, because we are sheep among wolves, let's keep it a buck, all right? People look at God's people as timid or scary, but they don't realize when you arm it up, you're none of that. But anyway, he's basically saying when you come to these people, you come in peace, you come in love, you love that your brother, you love thy neighbor, you spread the word of God. If these people are not peaceful with you, if they want to fight with you, they want to start confusion and mess, 
Leave him. He said, shake the dust off your feet. That lets you know what he feel about the people that treat you that way. How he feels about the people that treats his, his servants that way. Shake the dust off your feet because that's because that's the only dusty people going to do that anyway. OK, and he tells you that, baby, Sodom and Gomorrah, what I'm going to do to those people that treat you like that is nothing. Sodom and Gomorrah ain't nothing. So knowing that it should give you the strength and courage to push through, you no, know, overcome the spirit of fear. Just I mean, come on, y'all. I didn't give y'all, you know, some verses today, but all of them should. All of, each one of them stands alone. You know what I'm saying? Each one of them stands by themselves saying what's going to happen and how you should be carrying yourself. If you do all these things, you follow these instructions, then God is He going to take care of them. He's going to deal with them. He says, Sodom and Gomorrah ain't going to have nothing. It's nothing compared to what I'll do to those people in that city. You better walk with your head up high. You better walk with your head up high. Do you understand me? Like, do you understand? Like, we if you are a follower of God, then you already know who the victory is ours. The victory is he is just done. These things that are going on in our world are just playing out, and it's his plan. So we already know who's coming to, with the sword. We already know who's coming to win, baby. So when these people try to come up against you, try to get you to be scared, make you feel like what you're saying ain't right, or make you feel like you're not worthy, God said you're worthy, and he said to let them try you. If they try you, you don't do nothing. I got it. If God got me, who can be against me? <laughs> I mean, like, really? What person out here is going to be able to top God? I don't care what they do to me. They get, they hung Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They hung Jesus, y'all. So what? Can, so even if they take my life, you're doing me a favor. You can talk about me. You can do all of it. You can spread rumors. You can gossip. You can do all that. But, baby, when my God come back, you're going to have a bone to pick with you about me. Period. It says, see, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they shall deliver you up to, I don't know what that word is, y'all. Send hindrance and flog you in their congregations. And you shall be brought before governors and sovereigns for my sake as a witness to them and to the Gentiles. So basically, he's saying to you. He, what that means, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, is mean we got to think like these people. We, I have, I have found, hold on, y'all, my daughter coming in. Come on. Hold on. I don't think I can pause that video. Oh, if he, if he was gonna stay. Oh, I'm gonna get ready. Okay. Hi, hold on, y'all. Go that way. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. I don't like to do it in front of the. Sorry. So the, I'm gonna finish it. And my dog is going crazy. But I'm almost done, y'all. So I'm gonna wrap it up. So basically, that's saying these people. You know, these like I was saying earlier in the video, a lot of these people that I was dealing or have been around just in the last seven months have been shocking to me but i realized that these you know especially people that are not really walking in you know christ like they say they are you know what i'm saying these people think worldly so i gotta know i gotta know how they think i have to know how to navigate i have to be just as wise as them and i think that's one of the reasons just as my testimony that god had me in the streets the way i was like i said i wasn't doing a lot of craziness but i was in the streets like as far as being around a lot of street people you know what i'm saying so i know the, i know how the streets work and and that's helped me be able to peep game you know what i'm saying see what's really going on now, i'm not gonna lie in some situation it took me a little bit i did because my discernment wasn't where it needed to be because i wasn't fasting i wasn't doing those things i wasn't filled with the holy spirit but baby now that i'm filled with that i'm filled with the holy spirit i'm fasting i'm doing all these things i'm on fire for god baby he's not letting nothing get past me and i'm not if I have to choose between believing a man or believing God, baby, I already know who I'm believing. All right. So I'm going to finish this up real quick and then I am going to go. So basically the uh, that verse finishes and it says. they And, and basically in that verse, they're talking about how people are going to deliver you up. They're going to hand you on a platter. Put me on a platter. Put, if, if you got a problem with me, put me on my platter. That's all I can tell you. Serve me up. 
because they did it to Jesus. They did it. There's nothing you could do to me that's worse than what they've done to my Savior. And that's it. It says, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it shall be given to you in that hour what you shall speak, for it is not you who speaks, but the Ruach of your father speaking in you. So basically he's saying, even once they get you, like, it's, oh, real quick, with that jab, I was, I I didn't know what to say to them people. You know what I'm saying? When they telling me to test, they telling me to do all these things. I just prayed about it. And when I got in front of them, I had the courage of God to say, I'm not doing it. That's it. And it wasn't me. And that's why that's, I'm going to wrap this up like this. If you hate on me or if you don't like me or anybody, just me, it don't have nothing to do with me. Because everything, everything that I have has been given to me by God. So if if there's any gift that I have, any anything that I've said that you didn't like, take that up. You want to take that up with God because it's not me. When I get up here, I may, when I, well, my first time. But now that I'm up here, you know, I know that this is the Holy Spirit talking through me. So when I get in front of these people and they say, you know, you're not following the worldly ways, you're not taking your jab, you're not doing these things that you're supposed to do. The only thing I can do is say, take it up with God. And then when you're in those situations where when you are in those situations where you're not sure what to say, pray and in the rock, the, the, the breath of God, the, the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, which is the breath of God. See how the Holy Spirit works? He just told me what to say, but it will give you the courage to say the things that you need to say. So these are, I'm going to go. So these are not like that, you know what I'm saying? But it's, we are hour and six. So I think this is a good length. So this is the board. If you want to see it real quick, get you some. I don't know why would y'all take a picture of that board, but I will put a picture. I'm going to make an Instagram, a new Instagram just for this particular channel, Whittle to the World. And I'm going to put pictures of my board up for y'all. All right. So. Additional scriptures, Matthew 10, 7. Oh, I just read that one, but Joshua 23, 10, 1 John 4, 18, Matthew 14, 30. Check those verses out, and I will also put them, all of the verses that I use today, in the description box. Um, I did it. I did it. Y'all shouldn't have never let me do this because it's on and popping from now. It's on and popping. But the thing about it is, it's not even me, me saying y'all should never let me do this. Y'all couldn't stop me. Nothing y'all, nothing y'all could have done could have stopped me because I'm armored with the with the with the Holy Spirit. I'm armored with everything that that Bible tells me that I need to do. So blessings, many, many, many blessings to you all. You guys pray for me and my family. Um, I'll be praying for you guys. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Eat. I hope you learned something. Um, and if you have any suggestions, I told you I'm about to do some videos about emotions. I'm doing discernment. I'm doing tricks of the mind. Those are my next three videos for sure. Um, I don't know how often I'm going to be uploading, but it's definitely going to be at least once a week. So I will see you guys. If I decide to do another one later this week or this weekend, I definitely will let you guys know. Follow me on Instagram. This Widow to the World is my YouTube channel. I am going to make an Instagram page for this channel. However, my actual Instagram for right now is the perfect drug. A lot of you guys, I'm pretty sure the people that are going to be watching right now um, with this, since I'm just started, know my Instagram. So follow me at the perfect drug. Follow me on Twitter, D-A-P-E-R-F-E-C-T-D-R-U-G. I'm changing that soon or I'm going to make a new page just because the Holy Spirit has put it on my heart to do that. So with that being said, I love you guys. I look for, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe. And blessings to you all.